Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. It has been a minute, but just to get us going, we are coloring out of this book. We're going to do a layer of watercolor pencils, followed by the Ardix colored pencils. The, if you didn't get a chance to see them, it's the Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle. Um, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite indulgence and my favorite watercolor pencils. Um, they're pretty much, you'll see me play around with the lighting a little bit here, but they are, they pretty much give the best like pigment output of any watercolor pencil I've seen. Um, that's still a watercolor pencil and not like ink tints. So, um, I love them. They really go on smoothly. Um, I try not to sharpen them very much and I'm, because they are pricey and I, you know, want to get as much out of them as I can. I don't sharpen them very much, which is fine since I'm using them as a watercolor layer, like a base. Um, but I do love these and, um, just wanted to treat myself a bit. I have not been coloring that much. This will give me two pages for the month and it'll be two Fox pages. So actually that's pretty good for me, um, for a month that I'm hosting a tag. So, um, the name of this book is in French. I put it in translate and it come out as hair balls, which I think is hilarious, but everybody else calls it fur balls, but I love calling it hair balls. Um, it is by Diane Dufour, who is my favorite, um, artist with the art therapy, uh, books like this. She has a bunch of others that are really cute. Like there's a teddy bear therapy one. There's a nature one. Um, but this book is... I mean, every picture is a winner. Every picture in this book is a winner. And I have waited and waited to color in this book. And I was like, you know, I haven't been able to color much this month. And what I'd really like to do is a page in this book. And um, as part of our color pencil collaboration, I really enjoyed doing a demo of the Amazon basic pencils in like the best way I like to use colored pencils, which is shading over like a base layer of color, like watercolor or something like that or marker. And I enjoyed doing the demo last much month so much, um, as a prelude to my review that I wanted to do it again this time. So our next pencil set in the alphabetically <laughs> inclined series uh our colored pen pencil collaboration series is uh the Ar Arctic pencils the 126 set i'm doing this with tammy colors too she did put her full Arctic review out about two weeks ago i've got a link to it in the description if you want to check that out and like i said i i think i like this format where i do a demo like a full somewhat full demo with the pencils and then I do like the formal review video where I color in a few things as well but this kind of gives you like me utilizing it on a whole page and again coloring with the pencils in the way I love to color with them the most and um, so if you're looking for a page that is all just the Ardix pencils. Tammy does a bunch of those different pages. I'll have some of those pages in the review, but again, just using them over a base color like this is my favorite way. Um, and I can't use marker, in, alcohol marker in this book because these are double-sided pages. So here we are with watercolor pencils. And um, yeah, I saw this picture and I just, I, I really do. This is probably one of my favorite books. Every time I look through it, it's really a shocker. I haven't colored more in it. It didn't take long at all because this is more of a square type book. So it's not as large as like an average coloring book. And so this really didn't take long at all. And the Aquarelle pencils like do a great job on this. They're also the only watercolor pencil I really am getting to the point 
that I like to use on Amazon paper because they don't take much water to dissolve. Um, usually cheaper watercolor pencils because they don't have as much of the pigment in them. You generally have to use more water, which causes the paper to like buckle and wrinkle and given Amazon papers real flimsy, even without any water to it, um, the more water you add to it, the harder it is um, to go back over that with like pencil. So th this gives me a way to use watercolor base on that paper without it messing with the integrity of the paper to the point where I can't use anything over it. But um, I figured I would show the full piece and while I'm doing this, kind of update you guys on what's been going on. Well, at least what I can. A whole big honking chunk of what's been happening is work and you know I don't I try not to talk about too much detail about work on here um, but that's been pretty much the dominant <laughs> uh, thing going on in my life right now and um, it's just it's been a hard start to the year I was really kind of like boy I hope 2024 will be better than the dumpster fire that was 2023 and while I'm gonna try to stay optimistic and you know hope that overall it will be better it's not off to the best of starts <laughs> I had one week like the very first week of the year I was like this sets a good pace everything was nice and balanced I felt like I could I had energy for life and hobbies and stuff outside of work and I had plenty of work and work I was interested in but it was nicely balanced and that was the last time I felt like overall it was a pretty good week mood wise and stuff and you know I was like this this is a good indicator and that was the last time I felt that way <laughs> so it's been almost two months <laughs> Um, I never shared the Seattle vlog I was going to and I got busy and secondly I was like you know I've already talked about how awful that week was and in all honesty it was just a lot of me talking into the camera because I couldn't show you guys a lot of things because it was cold and I was in the hotel room a lot of hotel rooms as we all know it was awful and um so I don't really want to, I'm not saying I want to forget that week ever happened, but I'm kind of saying I want to forget that week ever happened. I got to see my coworkers and hang out with my team, which is always great. Um, and, you know, it was really nice to do that. We got some things accomplished, but everything else, oh boy, howdy. Um, oh, I realized I, yeah. This will run for a couple minutes. You know, I'm lazy. I don't want to go in and cut this piece out. This will go for a minute or two and then we'll move to activating this with water um, once I finish putting the red on the foxes. Yes, we are doing classic red on the foxes this time. And um, as you can see, like the pigment on these pencils is amazing. And really and truly, these pencils, if... Um, are we coming back? What are we doing here? Okay, yeah. Tr really and truly with these pencils, if I just layered over, like with different layers of the pencils, I probably could, there are a lot of pictures because these are so pigmented that I could just use the watercolor pencils and be happy. But when I tell y'all the difference I see between the pencil shading and like the finished watercolor picture, it's just, it, it, I'm so proud of this picture. Kind of spoiler alert, I love how this picture turned out and it made me so happy. Um, especially just being away for as long as I have from mostly coloring. Um, well, ho all hobbies. But no, it's just been a breakneck pace. Um, we did not have our year 
I do email marketing. We didn't have our year plans in place because a lot of things shuffled at the end of the year in terms of goals and people who are in charge of the different programs and things like that. So beginning of January, we were still trying to do, actually we've been do, doing planning for the year up until like the end of this month. Um, it's just taken a while. So here I am using my Arteza uh, water brush. I love using these water brushes. Actually, I just love using this one particular one. I'm sure I know I have the other smaller and the more like brush looking brushes, brush looking flat brushes. Um, but I end up just using this one all the time because <laughs> I'm lazy, but it works and it works really well. But look at the color payout on these. It's just, I I don't have to justify, I know I don't have to justify my purchases, and I know I don't have to justify how, why I love using these, but darn it, it just, it makes it really hard to use any of my other ones um, when I get like this kind of color off of these. But you know, a lot of times for your water, your bases, like watercolor bases you want it to be a little washed out looking like I really went with some rich color here because I just wanted a vibrant picture but like normally your bases are like light sometimes pastel sometimes not but just really light kind of washed out colors anyway because like if you're using color pencils you'd be using the lightest color in your group of three or four or five pencils or whatever you have so because this would normally be like your lightest pencil base, it's normally not going to be super pigmented, but in this case, I just wanted a really rich look. And um, like I said, I was super pleased with the results. Sometimes I do tend to go too dark with my base color, just because I like really dark, bold color. Um, this time though, I did, I did look between the loom, luminance the Karen Dash Museum aquarelle pencils and picked out like what would be the the lightest color in a group of three or four and then compared them to the Artix pencils so I knew which colors I was going to use and this was fully planned across both the base and the shading sometimes I will just use marker on a page and be like these are the colors I'm going to use I'll make it work with pencils um, but this time I did a full plan across both the watercolors and the pencils and I think that was what really worked well for me for this picture and um, that was how I managed not to go too dark on the base colors isn't that so pretty though I love the little foxes they're so cute if not friend why friend shaped right <laughs> um, but no, I'm not going to go cuddling foxes. The cats would never forgive me. Um, but anyway, so like I said, this is kind of a demo, kind of a color and chat. Um, if you want to go straight to the demo part with the Arctic pencils, I have jumps, um, jump links and chapters in the description. So um, I should have said that like a while ago. So feel free to jump to that part if you just kind of want to see my initial thoughts. Well, it's not really initial thoughts because I'll be honest with you. These are pencils I have used and I've used actually probably the most out of all my pencils other than my Prismacolors. So I actually have a lot of reference pictures to pull from, but I just want to do another one with them. So you'll kind of, they're not my first thoughts, but you'll get my thoughts that will probably be echoed in the review but you'll see like more examples and stuff so um if you want to jump to that feel free um so yeah um that that week in seattle like it wasn't just that but i mentioned that i could not get my rheumatologist to do a prior authorization for my expensive antidepressant I take. It's called Sabella. There's no generic. It's an SNNRI. I think that's right. Um, and I kept waiting and waiting, hoping. I kept calling them. I kept hoping I could get it done. Um, it couldn't happen. I had to drop. I had to pay $500 for one month of this. 
And um, I was kind of hoping, you know, sometimes you go for a while on a medication, you start to think, hey, maybe I don't need this anymore. And so I weaned off of it, kind of hoping I didn't need it. Um, no, I still need it. Um, that was a big part of the problem was I didn't have all my meds that week. And even the week after, I had to go off of it completely for a few days because of all the snow and ice, there was this huge delay in deliveries. And so the medication delivery was actually held up by like a week. So needless to say though, I'm probably gonna have to, I'm still haven't heard back from him. So I'm, I paid for this prescription in February and I'm probably gonna pay for the one in March. Um, it's going to be close to when I go see him, but I'm supposed to go see him in March and we're going to have a come to Jesus moment and we're going to get this resolved. I'm already going to find another rheumatologist. I've just, the way his office has been, the way he has been is terrible. Um, I won't drop names right now, but once I find, I have to go, I'll probably just go back to my old rheumatologist I had in uh, the only one in my county, the only group of doctors, and, um, I mean, they're better than nothing, but I was kind of hoping this guy would be better, but, you know, at this point, no, no, especially when it comes to this, this is, like, ridiculous, I shouldn't be paying for this med, not, not with the ability, it can be pre, you know, the pre-authorization can happen and stuff, it's, it's ridiculous, um, and when you leave multiple messages over the course of a month, I'm not talking about all in one week, you message them on the portal, like, I can't do, there's nothing else I could do except go into their office and just sit there and wait for somebody to come out and speak to me, and that's a two-hour drive there and a two-hour drive back. So, anyway, um, that has been a source of frustration. However, I learned that I need the meds, um, so it's just... It sucks, but it's got to do what I got to do um, in order to keep functioning. And so I'm fully back on my dose. And thankfully, I that I don't think I would have survived February without it. So, <laughs> or even the rest of January, to be quite honest. Um, so, um, but it's just been ever since I got back. It's just been so much going on. Um, and my workout, my sleep's been weird where I felt like I needed to sleep more. I don't know if I'm still kind of recovering from that week. I don't know if it's just, ever since August last year, I have been struggling more. I've been more fatigued. I've been more um, run down. It's been harder since I was sick. But we will get back to that in a minute. Here we are with the actual demo. As you can see, no bleed through on the page behind it. It is curling a little, um, but it's not anything that some flat books stack, you know, a bunch of heavy books stacked on top won't fix. It's just on the very edge of the page. So these just, these pencils, like the watercolor pencils just nail it every single time. Um, I'm hoping I can do a review of my watercolor pencils like I am my colored pencils because I know these are just not in the price range for people. They are, I believe, open stock. So, I mean, you could always get a couple to try. Um, but I know, like, these are not in the price range for a lot of people. So, what I'd like to do is be able to... I don't know what would be the next step up after this because um, it's kind of like I'm thinking of them all and they're like the all these watercolor pencils then the aquarels and so I would like to review them all and do a lot of testing and see like is there's one that stands out from the pack enough to be kind of a middle of the road between this and um, between those and the aquarel. And um, I know that they also have, well, actually, there are just regular Aquarelle, not the museum. These are museum Aquarelle. I think, like, these are, like, really professional level pencils. And they they have, like, light fast ratings and things like that. Um, 
but um anyway so hopefully I can do that I know there's some other Karen Dash ones like the super color and the aquarelle like standard aquarelles but those are also a little pricey because I have the museum ones I don't know if I want to invest in the other ones just yet but we will see if I don't really have a crowd standout they're not as expensive as museum aquarelle so if I don't have one that really stands out from the crowd in my existing collection that might be the one to recommend so we'll see but instead of watercolor pencils we're going to talk about these pencils so Ardix colored pencils these I wouldn't say they're really the new kid on the block but I guess they're still the relatively new kid I say that and it's probably been two or three years because time has no meaning and <laughs> and what I think happened a year ago actually happened like three years ago so maybe not but these um the pencils feel like Prismacolor size like they feel nice and hefty in the hand they don't feel like the Amazon basics felt like slightly thinner and I know I should probably look and see what the actual size of the pencils are but these have a feel to them maybe not as big around as Prismacolors but I feel like they're pretty close so if you like Prismacolors I think you'll like how these feel in the hand it's a round barrel um, solid color all the way through they have a color name I think they have a number two but it's like a number after a long number I would just go by the color names I have this sheet and I showed it at the very beginning if you want to go back and look um, color with Claire has some color family charts that she's created for some different pencil brands and like oh, I would I would like if she did a patreon or something where she would put out like one of these a month I literally would pay a monthly subscription to have access to these um, because I love them so much they make color choices so easy when they're grouped by family colors and it's just I don't feel like I'm smart I'm knowledgeable enough about color theory to be able to do this so um, but it just when I was picking the colors for this it just like there's this whole series of blues that include like indigo blues the darkest and when I compared the aquarelle pencils to it the museum aquarelle I don't want to keep getting them confused uh, the true blue in the Arctic's match the blue that I picked in the aquarelle and so I was like oh well this is easy the true blue is kind of a light to medium in the series so then I pick one of the mid colors after that and which I think I picked ocean blue and then indigo blue and there you go I've got my three pencil color sets so these these color with Claire charts are by far my favorite uh, color swatch charts for pencils but um yeah so there's 126 pencils in this set um I feel like it's a nicely balanced set you actually have quite a few purples which is really nice um, some pink purples um, you don't have a lot of like true pinks maybe just one really good set of true pinks um, and whether those really I don't know if you like a lot of pink well you do have like skin the lighter skin tones but if you like pink this may not be the best set for you um, I don't use pink very often so this is this is fine with me it's got a great number of blues um, a couple good sets of blue greens and then some really good greens I like the neutrals a lot um, the skin light skin tones and then they've got like some real rich reds it's just I don't know it's just a really nicely balanced set with a few fluorescents thrown in for fun and the silver and gold there's three fluorescents a yellow an orange and a pink and then like a silver and gold pencil I don't really use those like very much if I want fluorescents I usually want more than just three pencils or if I want a gold and silver I don't quite usually like the results that colored pencils give me so I'll use something else but like 
you know, they could have thrown in a few more pinks probably instead of those. But, you know, sometimes maybe you just need a fluorescent pencil. I don't know. Um, but that is kind of how it looks as a whole. They've got a lot of really nice yellows and dark yellows and like yellow yellowed oranges, which I really like. Um, a lot of gold colors. So in this case, I picked what is called indigo blue and ocean blue to go with this lightest color, which would be true blue in this chart if, if I had used a pencil, uh, just a regular color pencil as a base. So um, you're seeing me color this in real time. I'll do the first part of this picture and then you'll see me speed it up. But, um, wow, time is really flying by. I always wonder if I'm going to have enough to talk about. And that is never an issue. So I don't know why I worry about that. But, um, I, so I've said before, I generally don't just use colored pencils in a picture. Once in a while I will. But I am impatient. I don't like a lot of the toothy white of the paper showing through. So I generally tend to have heavier pressure. Um, like I said, I don't have a lot of patience to do a lot of layers. And um, I mean, I'm just being honest. about. <laughs> and I don't really have a lot of time to color. So when I color, you know, like I want... <laughs> I want my coloring, as much as it's relaxing, I also want it to be efficient. Because if I'm getting bored with it, it's not doing me any good either. Um, here I am with the ocean blue, by the way. Um, and, uh, and the biggest reason is they can be hard on my hands and wrists. I have a lot of tendonitis, fibromyalgia issues, particularly my right arm because of all the computer work that I do. Um, and all the hobbies that I enjoy usually require me like crocheting, coloring, or require a lot of use of my hands and wrists. So, um, just using pencil and then trying to use like heavier pressure just puts a lot of wear and tear on me and makes it harder for me. To, it makes it harder to color and I don't get to color as frequently and it causes more pain. So. What I typically like to do with colored pencils and what I've been really enjoying here lately is I will create a base layer of some color and it will be using markers, it will be using watercolors, watercolor pencils, uh, Neocolor 2s, King Art gel sticks, um, gelatos, anything like that. And then I will come over on the top with pencil that gives me that smooth color base I'm looking for. And then I'll come over with darker pencil to shade around the edges. And usually there, as you can see here, I'm not putting a lot of um, layers on. I'm just, I wouldn't say quick and dirty, but yeah, I'm just trying to get a little bit of shading and an effect in there. So um, color pencils are not my first go-to for coloring, nor would I call myself an expert with them. However, I do love how they can transform a page like this. Um, as you can see here, just looking at the difference between the top and the bottom with that just watercolor base and then the shading on the top, that it just creates so much dimension. And when I'm in the mood to do this, I just love the effect I get. And, um, I, for somebody like, like me, um, for a set of pencils that can go over, um, a base color consistently and give me like the depth of color that I need and they're not really difficult or smudgy or whatever. Like I honestly, I think the Artix, as of right now, the Artix pencils are my favorite pencils to use in this in this setup um, and that's going to be evident from all the pictures I'm going to show you Friday because I just don't as much as I love this I just don't take the time to do it as much as I I usually go for a lot of quantity where I'll just do straight like marker pictures and stuff 
but um, I don't usually do a lot of shading with pencils, but my exception to that has been pictures with Artix pencils. Um, and I've even done, I even did a picture last year with just the pencils um, and it turned out great. So I really enjoy these pencils. Like I said, I would say in terms of use, as far as how often I've used these, for someone who doesn't color with pencils very often, these, my Artezas and my Prismacolors probably have gotten, over the past five years, have gotten the most work out in them. Um, I even, I would say I prefer these to Prismacolors for the reason that I use heavy pressure and Prismacolors are so soft they can smudge. If you notice in this picture I'm actually using a, a little glove that fits over like the back half of your hand. Um, looks like kind of a halfway Michael Jackson glove. Um, I use that because I like, I don't generally color from like top left to bottom right, though I try to in this picture. Um, and I found out at first when I was coloring my Prismacolors that I would smudge so much because they were so soft. And over, over the years I've learned to use, you know, like a makeup brush to brush them, um, to when I use them like this over a base layer, I, I don't press them as heavily, um, so they don't smudge as much, but they're still just so soft that I have to be really careful with them. I typically only use them on pages where I'm not using very much colored pencil, just because I do love them and the colors, but they just smudge so easily for me. These do not. I, um, you'll see me go over this whole page and I mean, I didn't do it in this video, but like in my review video, we'll take a look, but I mean, I'm rubbing my hand over the page right now and I'm not coming up with nothing. These don't, they're soft, but like not so soft that they smudge. Like they're just a really good, like I said, they're really good shading pencil. I don't know. You know, I've only really colored with them, just them, on one picture without using, you know, a base of marker or something. And, you know, I will see Friday, 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 maybe Saturday is when I'm going to do the review on these. And um, we'll see as I'm coloring with just the pencils on the pages like I did with the Amazon Basics. Um, but really and truly, I do enjoy these. And um, I don't color with just colored pencils on Amazon paper ever. So <laughs> I, I assume they don't perform, based on Tammy's video, I don't think they perform super well on Amazon paper. But honestly, I don't like using just pencils on Amazon paper anyway, because it's such a pain. It, it's such a toothy, difficult paper to work with anyway, um, with pencils. But... <laughs> Um, that's why I'm saying so from my perspective, I, I really do. I, for what I use these pencils for, they are probably my favorite right now. I, I have a lot of sets I haven't used very thoroughly, but this set I have, and I have to say, I, these are a joy to use every time. I've never once picked these up and just been like, oh, these are driving me crazy. I don't like these very much. Um, so, um, yeah, that, hopefully, I might speed this up here in a little bit. Well, no, because I've got a few other things I need to talk about, but we're going to, I think, I'll shade in this part and the branch and the fox on top, and then the rest of the video will be sped up, so, and then I'll show you guys the finished picture, but, um, Anyway, so I mean, we'll do a full review and kind of a full look. Look, kind of what I did today, but a little more in depth. And I'll color a few pages with just the pencils. And we'll talk about it. Like I said, I'm probably going to do that this weekend. I'm supposed to be doing it about two weeks behind her reviews. And I've been, of course, running a little behind. But it's okay. It's okay. Um, 
it was just you know honestly it was just really nice to sit and color um I haven't colored since I did that fox picture earlier this month um yeah just even the idea of just getting markers out and a color by number page have felt overwhelming um like I said work's been a big thing um and my hour so I've been super tired and so I I spend like when I say like super focused 90 percent of my work time is super focused big brain work like it's not all day every day but like the majority of the week has been that way we're doing a lot of advanced like project management planning right now and everything so um it is like I said big brain time um I am hopeful all this work will pay off because the schedule I've put together for this year while it is busy um as of right now and I know I'm probably like jinxing myself saying this stuff but um as of right now is not intense like it was last year um because last year was a lot of learning and a lot of testing and then this year we're going to be doing some new campaign emails and new things to try but we're taking what we learned from last year um and going with a less is more approach so I am I, I really enjoy the work I'm doing right now like this is it, it's a lot it's intense it is exhausting but it is work that I am enjoying because it's a bit of a challenge um, I'm more used to an environment where I'm building emails I'm doing quality checks I'm launching the emails I'm doing reporting but higher level project management stuff is something that's really been a big jump in this job um, in terms of like management strategy and um, I've really enjoyed it um, like I said it's been a challenge and it's difficult to manage but I I really enjoy the work I'm doing right now like barring my feelings on everything else that's happening um, past like my team's great um my I really enjoy the work I'm doing anything above that you know we're just not going to talk about but like that part is is really good it's just it's a lot and I I work like 11 to 7 and if I don't so if I I tend to for some reason 11 to 7 I don't get as fatigued in the afternoons um, because I'm sleeping like 10 hours a night which is ridiculous um, but I may be modifying my work hours to that um, which sucks because then when I get off at 7 o'clock um, like I'm fried for the day I like I said it's really hard to do anything um, or feel like doing anything even coloring I'm just exhausted all the time and I need things to balance out a little more and I'm hopeful it will from this week forward I'm hopeful um, trying to be optimistic a little bit here um, so a couple things that happened this month that were also big things that I haven't really talked much about so when I came back hang on just a second okay sorry about that um so when I came back I, I know I told you guys when I came back from Seattle um I came back on Saturday and on that Sunday night uh Winry had an episode of something in the middle of the night where she kind of slid off the bed um was kind of her head was rolling around a little bit like she was looking very disoriented um wobbly for I don't know two minutes then she kind of straightened out within 10 15 minutes she was walking around absolutely normal um and normally i would have popped her in a carrier and took her you know an hour hour and a half away to nashville to get her evaluated um even though it was like 2 a.m 
Um, but I was getting sick that night. That was when I started getting sick with that sinus infection. And, um, I made the decision because I was taking my other cat first thing in the morning anyway to get his stitches out of his ear, reap cheek, um, that I was just going to take her first thing in the morning too, um, that she was acting fine. I would, I tried my best to keep an eye on her on the rest of the night, but guys, I just was so, and I feel guilty about it now, but I was just so exhausted and there was just nothing left in me to give, um, you know, I made, I made that decision and it worked out fine. I'm grateful. Um, cause it could not have, and it would have really like eaten me alive. But I took her in that morning. I thought it was a possible stroke. Um, it could have been a seizure too. I don't know. Um, she had a suspected stroke like a few years back, but when I did bring her to the vet then, they looked in her ears and she actually had wax like in her ears and it was vertigo and issues due to the wax buildup. So she had to have surgery to flush that out. Not surgery, but I mean, they had to knock her out. And so, you know, while I was hoping that's what this was, um, this looked different than that. And so they checked her that Monday. Um, she seemed absolutely fine with the exception of she um had when they did a check on her the previous november to check her kidneys they did listen to her heart and noticed she had very slight heart murmur it's like a level one out of like six or five and then when she went that monday after i got back in january it was already up to a level three in just like two months um so the the vet that saw her was concerned about that and she said you know I can't tell for sure she had a stroke or not she's like I do suggest we go ahead and do a senior wellness on her which I thought we had done one last year but we didn't we had just been checking her kidneys it's hard to keep up with them <laughs> y'all um so I scheduled her one as soon as I could get her which was the 13th of February and uh she hadn't had another incident since then however she, she had dropped almost a pound too that day when we weighed her. And I attributed that to me being gone that week. Um, she probably just didn't eat. She is very skittish, half feral. She, I am her person. She prefers me. She'll let Brent pick her up and she'll tolerate it but for the most part like she doesn't want she just wants me around and she gets really upset when I'm not which is why we have to use amitriptyline while I'm gone because otherwise she'll wind up sick or with a UTI so I attributed the weight loss to her um me being gone and um she went on a hunger strike I guess but then I noticed over the past month she I, I felt like I was really getting hurt. She just was not eating. And it came, became an issue because she does not even want me hovering over her. And so I have to, you know, watch her to make sure she eats. She doesn't eat or she eats like a little bird. She eat just a little bit and go on, which is what she does. She's done it for years. If I'm hovering over her more or trying to give her other food, it stresses her out more. And it just turned in this cycle where I was trying to get her to eat and I was just stressing her out more. Um, and when I brought, when she went in, I was in pieces because she hadn't eaten in like 24 hours. And she'd been throwing up the last couple days. And I just really thought like, things are bad like there's something really wrong with her stomach and uh so Brent took her for the senior wellness because I had a meeting that day I couldn't miss and they ran the blood work and they listened to her and they were going to call me later that week and they did um she is 19 by the way um she is now the oldest one we know of the cat I had uh Bob Miyazaki she might have been older. I don't know what age she was when I got her. She looked a million when I got her. 
Um, but she played like a kitten right up until she passed away. But this is the oldest cat I know of that we've had. Um, she's, she's, you know, for being a little bird, I call her a little bird because she really is. She's so tiny. Um, being a little bird of a cat, she has really had good health and good genes. Uh, rare issues um, over all this time. So, um, oh, real quick. So we're about to get to the sped up portion to finish this out as you can see like I said I think the pencils turned out great I like I said I really it was easy to match up the colors 126 or 120 ish pencils feels like a good healthy number um I would obviously love more in a set I am <laughs> I'm a pencil hoe <laughs> like a lot of pencils um I don't like mixing colors I don't I don't want to be bothered with all that um I know some people that's like their favorite thing to do they spend hours just blending and mixing pencils and I'm kind of jealous because I would love to be able to do that but just give me the colors in the pencils I just when I'm doing stuff like this it's so much easier for me to just be able to pull the different shades and um so the more colors the better um but like compared to the amazon basic set like this was so easy um because how well the color family matched up like this is a really good combination the 76 museum aquarelle and the artix pencils i think in terms of pencil colors it was pretty good i struggled a little bit with the greens but overall everything else was relatively easy to put together so um yeah hopefully i will have the full review up this weekend and um but yeah just know i really dig these pencils um at least i do so far so um dr dr mandy uh called me that friday and she said so she said listen to her she said she sounds about the same as January probably now it was a different bet that lists her she's like she is a level three maybe maybe she's a little worse than she was in January she said but I did an additional test to see there's a marker in their blood they could check for the shows if they're at risk for cardiovascular disease and hers came back high so she said I think her fatigue her some of her issues with eating I think you know where she seems like she might be in a little bit of pain and all this that you're seeing is um tied to that she's like you know she does have a little bit of gas in her intestines we talked about that in november um but she said i think her heart's the key to the issue she's having and so um unfortunately with cats if their blood pressure is not high there's not really a lot they can do until they're actively in heart failure um and her blood pressure is perfect so um that we don't have to do anything with that however um anybody familiar with heart issues knows that also puts you at increased risk of stroke and um so she suggested we try plavix which is a blood thinner um to try to reduce her chance of stroke and she said it is very you know is a very good possibility that she did have a minor stroke at, in January um, based on based on the results and based on you know everything we know about uh, decreased heart capacity in cats and stuff and like heart murmurs and stuff so um, the thing that really upset me about that too is she likely at least I suspect she likely had that stroke due to high stress. Um, I had to be gone a few more days that week because of the storm, uh, the ice storm and stuff. But even with that, like, I think the stress of me being gone might have triggered that. Like, she just got upset. Her blood pressure might have went up. Um, because, and it, it may have made the murmur worse. I don't know. I, I hate to think that upsetting her, you know, her being stressed over that was the reason why it was degrading so quickly but I don't I don't know I can't say for sure it just seemed awful weird that stroke popped up right when I was gone um 
so we started her on the Plyvex last week and we had to do it transdermal because that girl cannot take a pill for nothing she her little poor little frail stomach can't seem to handle any sort of pills or medication like that so we're having to do it transdermal which is like an ear med they put it in like a lotion or something and when I tell you I have to sneak up on her while she's sleeping because otherwise again I'm really stressing her out with it um actually she reacts better to my husband doing it than I am um which is kind of funny um but so we started the Plavix a little over a week ago seems like it's going okay she seems like she's doing well she has put her weight back on she's back up to seven pounds um she is a lot more clingy than she used to be um poor thing can't stand me being in the office because there's no I try to create places for her to lay around my desk but she doesn't want to do that she wants me on the couch in there with her in the bed so she can perch on me um like a little little bird on my shoulder um while I sleep and she really like wants a lot more affection and I know part of that is she's not feeling great um probably because of that she's probably feeling more fatigued and and stuff so I try to take more time during the day to spend with her um because the one thing I've never regretted is spending more time with the cats um the thing I do feel guilty about is when I don't spend enough time with them and something happens but we are spoiling her and she still plays with her mice she has these little toy mice she likes to pick up and carry around the house and howl with and I did notice you know since November she's been a little quieter with it she hasn't she used to do it like for hours in a day two or three times a day and now she might do it once a day if she's not feeling great two or three times a day if she's having a good day she loves to put them in the bed too with me like a gift it's it's kind of the cutest thing as long as she don't put a live mouse in there or real mouse we're good um she's doing all right guys i am extremely worried about her i do not have any travel i have to do until may um so we're going to re-listen to her here in about two months and see how things are doing um that should give us hopefully a pretty good baseline um it is very possible that the stress of me being gone did aggravate it and make it worse it could be that because she's at such high risk and she's just reaching that age where you know her heart is she her never have had has had issues up until the last like three or four months with her heart it could just be her heart's just done all it can do for 19 years i mean it's been going a long time it could be that you know it's just going to continue to get worse no matter what we do like i'm obviously going to create as low a stress environment as i can because obviously more stress would um could make it worse so there's no point in stressing her. not that she lives a stressful life anyway except when i'm gone but my goal is to try to limit being gone from the house um to just appointments and stuff um until we have her next checkup and we see where she's at i'll have to see in april i am trying not to worry about may i'm not trying not to worry may's a work trip june is the trip my brother and i normally take i am trying not to worry about those right now which is really hard for somebody that loves to worry um i'm trying not to worry about the future when we haven't even got past now um, like I said, I need to focus on the time I have with her now because, you know, no matter what we do, she might not even, you know, it, it, she might only have a few months. So I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's, it was a pretty big jump from November to January. So, um, they're all, you know, they're all special to me. I'm partial to all the cats but she definitely has been my exclusive cat her entire life and so I do you know 
there are a lot of ways where she is uniquely special and so um i am and she's my last girl um of all the ones i've had so um it's just her and the boys now and uh but she she's doing good she's doing just fine like i said i'm so glad she put the weight back on um it is a big stress for her for when i'm gone so it's something i may have to think about but and and figure out but i'm not going to worry about it till april at this point i just can't i just it's funny because there's a lot of things i i worry about everything i'm anxious about everything and the last few weeks while i have shut down at times because i've been so stressed there's also i've hit my mental capacity so severely in the past month that i'm actually reacting in probably a healthy way to some of this stuff where i'm like i just can't worry about that right now i just can't and and past me would have been like oh i worry about everything let's bring it on come on <laughs> bring it and now i've really drawn the line and just been like i can't worry about that right now which is funny because that's probably exactly how i should react in a healthy way to <laughs> future stress but i'm not it i'm not doing it because i'm being healthy i'm doing it just because i mentally can't handle it anymore <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, and, and also with that, my mom had a, uh, my mom wound up in the hospital. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. She just was out, um, ended up passing out, ended up having to be taken by ambulance to uh, Nashville hospital and they ran a bunch of tests on her and it could not find what caused it um ruled out all your ruled out you know stroke heart attack all the different things um she did have one of her levels i think it's tronopin is the name of it that measures like i guess heart damage like it's what they check after if they think you've had a heart attack that had been slightly elevated but was trending down um however people who have certain um certain illnesses and my my mom had um an undiagnosed uh hole in her heart for 35 years like they didn't catch it when she was a kid like they normally do she it grew to the size of a quarter it was a hole between the chambers in her heart honestly a miracle she's here to be honest and she had me even with it um which is pretty amazing uh but they fixed it when she was 35 but of course it by the reason they want to catch it when you're a kid is because i mean it will do damage over time your blood vessels and veins and arteries and stuff will enlarge because the extra pressure it's because of the extra work that's having to be done because your work heart's not working to capacity so you know it had done some damage by the time she was 35 and so she's had you know some ongoing things develop since then and um she's had to you know like she's on oxygen 24 7 um and and she's got some other issues but the the health diagnoses she has all can be and it all could elevate this the tronopin levels or whatever so um she has a cardiologist she works with she who's in charge of her case in nashville and he is amazing he only takes specialty cases um when she had that watchman device put in a few years back that was relatively new at the time he took over her case after that and let me tell you that that was a blessing um I, ha I have to go through the story at some point but um anyway he's had her case ever since and there's been medication specialty medication they've tried and when i tell you like i think she's felt better this past year than she has in years i'm not exaggerating like she has acted like she feels so much better um so that's why this was such a weird thing to happen however um she had just had dental work that took two hours and she had to be off her oxygen for the two hours 
right before this appointment. Plus, my mother's like me. Sometimes she just doesn't eat during the day. We tend to, me and her both, tend to eat more in the evenings <laughs> and at nighttime than we do during the day. And I think it was a combination of maybe some low blood sugar and her being off that oxygen for two hours that um, led to that. Okay. Um, so here's the finished picture. Um, over, over the moon with this picture. It just is so stinking cute. I was a little nervous that I would m not do it justice, but let me tell you the the watercolor pencils did great. The Artix pencils just shaded over this perfectly. Like just did exactly what I wanted them to do. I didn't have to go through layers and layers with them. Um, picking the colors with them to go with the watercolor base layers was super easy, especially with this color chart that I had. Um, and there's so many pencils and colors to choose from that made it a lot easier and less of a headache. And um, this is just, I honestly want to color this whole book like this. I just, I love it so very much. And uh, Love the Foxes, this book, y'all, is like the cutest book. I, it is cheaper on Lyrica. I think it's 13 US. Lyrica is a French site that, um, and I put the link in the description. You can um, tr use Google Translate to like translate it to English. Um, but uh, I have no problems using it. I've used it multiple times for Disney books and these types of books in particular. Um, but like right now, it as of February 28th, it's like $13 US, $14 US on there with free delivery. So that's a heck of a deal for a, just an amazing book. I, if I thought I would need a second copy, I would so be buying a second copy right now. Um, I did put an Amazon link to it too, though it is a little pricier on Amazon, but if you feel more comfortable using that, um, I still think it's a good price, um, especially because there's, if you have Amazon Prime, there's, I don't think any shipping cost with this one. So, um, anyway, I put both links in the description and, um, yeah, it's just, it's so cute, guys. And, and like I said, I'm pleased. I was hoping I could get more done this month, but you know, I've done two Fox pictures and one of them was with colored pencils <laughs> and I'm so happy with it. Um, but, um, anyway, so, uh, look for, I'm still going to keep, keep, I'm going to wrap up my coloring chat, but for those of you that just want to catch me next time, um, I will have new flip throughs on Friday. I will we'll talk about it in like my roundup for the month, but I did buy some new books um, that are going to be here hopefully tomorrow. Um, we'll do some flip throughs Friday. Uh, I won't have a completed pictures this month because again, I only colored two pictures. However, I'd like to do my full review of Arctic this weekend. I'm hoping we could do that. And then Monday or Tuesday, I'm probably going to go ahead and cover my planner and like what worked with my plans for February. And then, yeah, we'll just go from there and see. Uh, I need to start my coloring book collection videos back up. Meant to do that this month. It just didn't happen. So if nothing else goes crazy, look for those starting next weekend, not this upcoming one. Um, so, so yeah. Um, so in talking about my mom, she is home. Went, by the way, um, just a little PSA out there for y'all. I, I know it's probably not this way at every hospital. It is, you know, the last time my mom had to go to a hospital, it took her two days to get a normal hospital room. This time she was there for two days and they never even could get her in a room. They went ahead and had discharged her because her everything looked, you know, pretty okay. And she was going to follow up with her cardiologist um, on the Tronopin thing afterwards. Um, so they were okay with letting her go. But, like, 
She spent two days in the ER. They never could get her into her room because they don't have enough staff is my guess. And I'm just telling y'all, like, I, I keep saying it. People don't like to hear it, but it's the truth. COVID is still a thing. Um, I hate to tell you, but if you get COVID, it makes you more susceptible to other things, too. And it may feel like you're just sick for months and months. And it could be you have two or three different things. And I can sit here and talk for 20 minutes about how... One test isn't enough to tell you if you're, you're positive or negative. You need to do two or three tests um, over the course of, you know, every other day or something. And, like, I could talk about all this, but most of y'all don't want to hear that. Um, but, you know, it's still a thing. And we still have a problem with the U.S. healthcare right now. And I feel like it's, it's bad if you have to go to the ER, um, if you're a nurse, if you are trying to get an appointment, especially a new patient appointment with anybody right now, especially a cardiologist, um, good luck is all I have to say because it is taking months and months if you're not established to get in places because all these specialty doctors are booked up because everybody's having long-term issues. So I'm just saying, be careful. I recommend you still mask and I recommend you still be careful, but you know, do with that information what you, what you will. I'm still masking. I'm still, the few times that I had to unmask when I was on that trip probably is what led to that sinus infection. It could have just been the change in temperature. But, um, you know, I still came back sick. Fortunately, it wasn't a big illness. But, you know, I still managed to pick up something even though I was masked most of the time. So, I'm just saying, um, you know, it is happening and it is an issue so fortunately mom didn't have to sit in the ER much more than two days um and then she could come home she's been fine I uh went and hung out with her some yesterday she seems like she looks terrible because she looks terrible I don't mean it like that um she had a lot of bruising because where she fell um she was on blood thinners a number of years and her skin and she's easily bruises and is very her skin's very fragile and so it just looks like somebody like hit like hit on her like it look like hit on her <laughs> like hit on her um it, it looks bad but it literally is just from where she fell and like they have to use special medical tape for her because otherwise it will tear her skin it is so fragile um but regardless of all that she does have some bruising and she's probably still a little sore but she seems like she's doing really well um she says she felt perfectly fine she has follow-up with her cardiologist in about two weeks um like i said that was the only thing um and they'll probably you know they may want her to do an echo they may want to check on it but um she's in really good hands with her doctors she's got a really good set of doctors right now so um i you know they really stay on top of checking her for everything there's other things that you know like i said they she's got a really good set of doctors honestly we're very lucky even though she uh has uh is it medicare medicaid i can never remember um she like i said she's very fortunate and they say my dad is great at staying on top of her health records and everything so um so yeah it was it was scary for a couple of days and um hated it for her because she my mom cannot stand being stuck in a hospital and I don't blame her I mean nobody likes it but my mother does not like to sit still um but you know she's all right but that was something else that happened and it's just it is just yeah a, a lot's been happening and um i am you know i i haven't fully given <laughs> mentally i can't really handle a lot more and so i'm making decisions to not actively worry about stuff but like i'm i'm in survival mode basically and i've got to have 
things calm down a little bit because if I don't I will be back in the same situation I was last September where I will be completely burnt out and have to well I don't have any F, much more FMLA to take uh, before September but um, I don't want to be back in that position I can't continuously burn out and then have a short recovery period to recover some and then get burned out again. I just can't keep up that pace. So I need things to calm down a little bit. If I'm going to be able to figure out some balance. I've been sort of keeping up with my planner the past couple of months. I haven't abandoned it completely. So that's good. I am still trying to stay optimistic. Again, maybe due to just survival mode. But let's work with what we got. Um, as my therapist would probably say, uh, in that, you know, March will be better. I will be able to color more, do more of the videos that I enjoy, that I will have the ability to not, to have more balanced work days and not be as exhausted in my time off, um, and be able to get back into crocheting and stuff. Oh, one thing I gotta tell you guys, <laughs> um, one thing I have been doing is the only thing I, I've been able to disconnect my brain completely and, and do is I've been playing the heck out of this game called Disney Dreamlight Valley. I, I've mentioned this before. Uh, my friend Chris from uh, Christopher's Corner, I think is his name of his channel, told me about it. And it is so fun. If you really like Disney, it's cute. It's like a resource gathering quest type game where... Um, you're not fighting monsters or doing anything like that, but like you can even befriend the villains. Like I totally love the villains in Disney movies. Um, I guess that probably says something about me, but like you can have like Ursula and some of the others in your back, you know, you're bringing a lot of the characters back from, I, I'm not going to go in the full of the timeline, but, um, you can even have Ursula and it's like so cool because she's sort of bad but you know not bad bad in the game and I have been so entertained by that game. It's been about the only thing keeping my sanity is being able to disconnect completely and just gather you know do gardening in the game uh, go around collect resources do little quests every now and then um it really has been such such a help <laughs> for me it's been about the only thing I've managed to do for the last like three or four weeks but it's been something at least that I've been able to clutch on to however I would like to be able to balance my hobbies more this month do some more coloring get back into my wobbles they are all sitting here my crochet stuff uh just waiting for me and, um, yeah, so, I think that's about it. There, it's weird. Like, you'd think that I would have a whole lot more to talk about, but it's just been busy and not in a good way. I, um, I just need it. I need more balance in my life right now. Oh, and, um, yeah, we're, um... Well, I'll talk about that in the monthly update on Monday um, about Brent and everything going on with him. But we're fine. The rest of the cats seem like they're doing really well. Winry seems like she's doing really well, given everything that's been going on. And I have backed off a lot of trying to worry over her. And I think she's eating at night. And the problem is because she eats like a little bird and she eats during the night have to leave food out for her to make sure she eats but then that means my fattest cats get access to food when they really shouldn't have access to food so I just you know my vet gets it she she knows we're doing the best we can do there's the little chip type feeders and stuff but when I tell you she is so skittish she will not use it I am not dropping a hundred and twenty dollars on a feeder that I know she's not going to use um, I just know better um, anyway, I have other things to talk about. I have a lot, like, I want to get my office finally redone so I can show you guys, um, all the new storage I, I got a couple months back. Um, 
my like all my coloring stuff I want to do more coloring videos I have series I want to do I just there's so much there and I just I need I need things to calm down so I can do all the fun things I want to do so anyway I hope everything else everybody else things have been going better um and I hope you guys have a good rest of the week like I said I will be back hopefully Friday with some new book flip throughs um I managed to what <laughs> I got the two other books that I showed a couple weeks ago and then these and this has been pretty much it this month so not bad not bad but we'll talk about that more I guess on Monday so all right guys I'll talk to you Friday thanks for watching and bye for now